hey welcome back guys all right so if you haven't subscribed please subscribe now and if you can support me on patreon please do so i will appreciate that the link is in the description if you can't support me on patreon that's fine uh just don't skip the ads that way you can help me out all right so continuing on we have a few items in the cart here so we have this first item that we read the second one and the third now one thing to remember is that these things will not always be in this order that this one is and the other one is because sometimes what will happen is uh, the user may remove an item from the cart so let's say we have item 0 and item 1 and then item 2 right so a user can remove item 1 here then we're going to have a gap in our uh, in our cart here so we'll see how to handle that when that happens and then here the results may differ because zero may be may not be the the one with id 7 which is actually true even now as you can see the very first one here in location zero has an id of seven because it's following the id there that's how it's retrieving the data but here we have eight we have seven and then we have ten so we need a way to map the quantity to the actual item so that we can read both from the same row when we get down to business in the view okay so what do we do now let's loop through this check its id and then what we'll do once we check the id we loop through the the this other array and then check the quantity when we find the correct id and then we add it there easy peasy yeah so let's come back here to app and let's go to the controller cart so this is our controller here and let's do that so the things we need here are this one and that one this and that so for now i just want us to exit the script from here so we don't have to load the rest of it all i want is to read the rows there and from here so let's go through the rows one by one so what I will do is put a for each here and then I will paste my variable so for each row as row oh we do need the key here because we don't want to edit this variable here we want to edit the original variable because if we edit this one this will remain as it is and that won't change the data and in order for us to edit this one, we need to know on what key we are on. So we leave the key there. So what I will say now is check uh, the current state. So I will say row, which we have gotten here. Let's use an if statement here. If row, because we have a current row here, which is this one. And remember, it's an object. So row ID is what we are looking for. So I'll say if row ID is equal it's actually okay to put three like that but uh, don't do that unless you know what you're doing uh, so if row id is equal to we want another id that we can compare that with so i think what we need to do is use another for loop here so let's add a for each loop here and this for each is the cart right there that's the variable so we need to know that the rows have actually returned a result before we can attempt this so as usual we check if this is an array and then if it is we will go ahead and i will move this internally like that okay so if this is an array let's loop through it and once we do that we are going to loop here and then also loop through the cart and each time we do that we are comparing to see if the ids actually match 
So since we already know there's only one ID, once we find it, we can exit this other loop to save time. So if row ID is equal to, so while we are looping through the cart here, there's a key and there's a value, but we don't need the key here because we're not going to be using it, but you can leave it there if you want. And be careful with the similar uh, variable names here because these are two loops inside the other. So you have to make sure that these are not the same. Otherwise you'll be overriding this with that. So with that said, you can put a key two there if you wanted to leave it in, but I will remove it because the key to my, uh, wait a minute, because I'm only reading the information from here. So I don't really need the key. Here, I need the key because I will be writing to this particular information, and that's why. So I will remove this and just say, um, let's call this one item like this. So here, I'm going to check if that is equal to item. And now let's look at the item uh, down here. Now, this one is an array. It's not an object. It's an array. So to read that, we have to use that like so. And we are looking for the ID as well. <clears throat> so when these two match the ID here, so imagine uh, we go through the first item in the row. We just grab the first item and then we loop through the cart to search for the ID. So if we do find that item in the cart, which would be the same ID, we will write to it. So how do we write to it? Make sure we are using rows and then let's create a new uh, memory location here. So we're just going to say quantity. Now, if you look here, we do have a quantity that comes with the, this is the quantity of the actual item, uh, actual product in our database, but we don't want to overwrite that. You can overwrite that if you want, but instead of that, what we want is to, uh, create a new one. We're just going to say cart underscore quantity. We should cut it like that. Cart quantity is equal to, and we know that the, the quantity of the cart is in here. So we'll get this paste there, but we change this to reflect quantity right there. Q T Y Q T Y like this. Okay. That's what we needed to do. And since we've found and we know there's only one item with the same ID, we can just break out of this loop so it doesn't have to suffer looping through the rest of the items in case there are many. It can just get out of this first loop and come back to this one. So I think if you want to break out of two loops, you put a two like this, break two. Okay, uh, with that said, what I want to do is let me mute these guys. So I just want to show you the row at the top and then show you the row at the bottom. The same variable here and there. So let's see so that we can see the changes. So yes, this is the... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. I think everything is good. So let's refresh. Now let's look at this. So you see this item number zero here. So we have these items, but we don't have the cart quantity. But then if we come down here, we will see that we also do not have the cart quantity. So definitely something went wrong. And I think I probably know what went wrong and because that is actually an object and we are trying to add uh, as if things are just like this. So we added one here, which is uh, not cool. So what we are supposed to do. Oh, I actually over overwrote the whole thing, which is definitely not good. Okay. So what we do here is we point like I had said, rows has a key. So let's get that key 
and put it here. And then inside the key, we are going to put an item. Okay, let me undo a little bit so I can copy this. Let me just uh, cut it actually. So let's put key like this. And then because this key is an object, we'll do that, paste. Yeah, I think uh, that does it. So let's try again and refresh. And now, as you can see, we have cart quantity of two. So, and then here we have cart quantity of four. This one is one. So let's do a comparison. Let me get the cart here and echo it just at the very end so that we make sure that we are mapping these things correctly. So one with an ID of eight has a quantity of two. So let's look for ID eight and quantity two. So you see ID eight, quantity two, correct. ID seven, quantity one. So ID seven, quantity one. And then this one, ID 10, quantity four, ID 10, quantity four. So very good. Everything seems to be working fine. So all we have to do now is go to the cart and give it this information. So all these guys out of here. Let's get out of here. So this is what we're left with. Okay. Wait a minute, select all from products we are in. Okay. So the rest of it, uh, this is not required. For example, this is not required. So let's, oh, what's going on? Okay. So the page title, uh, that definitely is required if rows, and then we go through the rows here. Now, this one is important because we need thumbnail versions of our images. We don't need, we don't want to have stretched images. So we will leave this B uh, because it gets, it sorts out the image. It exchanges the actual image for the thumbnail version, which is good. Then data rows, rows, everything looks uh, good, actually.